Hello, all of you hi-fi enthusiasts out there. This episode is just for you. Nah, who am I kidding? Of course, this is a Shamu episode. Even though it is a piece of audio equipment you're looking at. If you've ever played Shamu 2, then this thing may look very familiar to you. It is in fact the same make and model, a Hitachi TRQ-298, that Ryu uses in the game to listen to the tapes that Huang, the wiretapper, made. You see, I've been looking for this machine for quite some time, just to get information on it. And it proved to be pretty tough to find anything. Until recently, when I was uh, looking on Google for pictures again. And yeah, I found some nice pictures, but more importantly, those pictures led to an eBay auction. I had this uh, get shipped from the US and it was advertised as untested, but I got it to work quite well. I don't know how much it comes through on the video, but these labels, I made them myself. This machine, I don't know if it's just a US machine that uh, doesn't have this, but in the game it looks like this, it has these labels. And I printed them out and s stuck them on there just to make it look a little bit more like it does in the game. If you look at the machine closely, you see that there are some cosmetic differences to the game, like uh, this counter here looks different, it's actually much less readable and much smaller than it is in the game. And yeah, this is a rack and battery meter, this works different than it does in the game, but you'll see uh, soon enough. Everything else, yeah, I think this grill looks a little bit different, but... Yeah, this logo is also a bit different, I think, but most of the details have been done pretty well. This is a handle here to carry it, and it's actually pretty well made. This is plastic, but these outer parts here, they are actually made out of metal. So let me turn this around for you. Here, yeah, this, it has a little bit of wear, but it's generally in pretty good shape. This is an AC adapter. It doesn't come. It didn't come with a cable. It didn't come with anything besides the unit itself. But I couldn't use it anyway because it's an American machine and it just doesn't match. The bag doesn't have much, though. I, I guess some feet so you can stand it up. Yeah. This side is obviously the most interesting because it has quite a bunch of stuff. A six volt input, external speaker, some input. Don't know how that works though. Some remote and a microphone input. So, how do I power this thing? Well, just like in the game. With... Ah, if I can get this open. Four C batteries. And here you can see a little bit more. Made in Japan. 120 volts. Yeah. I did some more research after I bought it and while the thing was on its way to me and I found something and it quite surprised me and I'm pretty sure you will be surprised too. I found mentioning of this unit in Billboard magazine in an issue from May 1972. The TRQ-298 monorail player recorder featuring a built-in condenser mic and an auto alarm stop at 89.95. In today's money, that is actually quite a lot. It's like almost $530, so it wasn't a cheap unit. And like I said, I was really surprised that the machine is that old. I mean, we're talking about, well, at least this was the time when it was announced, so I'm not exactly sure when this particular machine here was produced, but it is basically 45 years old. It's even 15 years old in Shenmue 2. That got me thinking. Why did they choose to include such an old machine in the game? One thing that comes to mind is, of course, the brand, Hitachi. As you might know, the Dreamcast and the Saturn use Hitachi CPUs. So that makes a kind of sense that they chose this. Still, someone of the development team must have had a look through some machines or something, or someone had this particular machine here and thought, yeah, let's uh, digitize it and put it in the game. So how about the tape? Well, 
I've been looking through a lot of vintage tapes and I found one that is quite matching in terms of the shape of the case. A TDK D90 made in 1985. I bought this one as brand new old stock which was kind of amazing. It's been a long time since I unwrapped a blank tape. I can't even remember when. Let me bring this up for you again here. If you look at this tape you can clearly see that the casing is pretty um, similar. I mean, it doesn't it have it has a very angular shape here. Most of them are round, and the window is kind of small. These kind of here indents here. I'll tell you how far it is, and the overall design, I guess. One thing that it lacks is the label. But I found a solution for this. I made a custom one. And I think it's close enough. I mean, I basically took uh, super high resolution screenshots of the game uh, to m print out this label on some sticky paper. And look, have you ever seen this? Have you ever wondered what they printed up here? Well, it's just the texture of the tape again with the underside, or rather the top side and the underside. Yeah, generic tape, Shenmue tape. I recorded the stuff to the tape with my Onkyo Hi-Fi stereo cassette deck, which is quite a high-end machine from 1992. Also pretty old, but it's of course much better quality than this small little device here. So now let's go ahead and put this in here. It's quite nice how this works here because it's kind of two-staged. If you press this slightly, it opens the window and if you press it further down it ejects the tape. You can of course do it in one go but it's not as nice. So let me put that in again and just roll the tape. As you can see here this is like a battery meter. It only acts as a view meter when you're recording and I'm not gonna shut up now. Okay, let's take a pause here. I'm not gonna play the entire tape. I mean, you all know the contents basically. So let's just fast forward a bit. Jacket and a white bandana, while the other man wore a leather jacket and blue jeans. The second man fits the description of a suspect with a Japanese accent in numerous other cases of violence throughout Wanzai and Aberdeen. And on the lighter side of the news, we report on the latest arcade games in Kowloon. Two arcade games that are becoming very popular are Afterburner 2 and Hang On. We found out that Afterburner 2 is located in the Phoenix building and Hang On is located in the Yellowhead building. If you want to play those two extraordinary games, don't forget to bring your piggy bank. That's all the information we have for now. Coming up after this next commercial... One thing I can tell you if you haven't noticed it yet, the tape counter actually runs 
quite a lot slower than it does in game. And I have the tone set to the middle, just like in a game, because if I turn it up to clear, which I guess this C stands for, it gets kind of harsh. I mean, it's a compressed telephone recording from a game, so yeah, it, it's quite uh, taxing on the ears. So let's for fast forward quite a bit more. And see where we land. Why don't you just close your bed? Please, trust me, I promise. Next month. I don't see why you have to push yourself so hard. You're still young. You can go anywhere and start anew. No nuts. If you move out of there, we won't bug you about your debt. And everything will work out. I know that. I'll wait I... until tomorrow. Take some time. Think it over. <laughs> Noodles for three and two plates of dumplings, please. Who do you think you're calling? Isn't this the Glory Diner? I want you to hurry with the delivery. Shut up! This is no noodle shop! Noodle shop! Noodle shop! Madam, I would like to recommend some stocks. Really? I know people who lost their money in stock investments. To avoid that, I'm inviting you to our seminar. A person like you with many assets won't have to worry about much risk. But what would I do with so much extra money? Madam, if you make more money, you can spend more. You won't have any problems spending more, will you? Okay, you win. I'll leave it up to you to select the right ones. Thank you so much. And how much did you want to invest? All of it. Uh-huh. All of the stocks that you can handle. Buy them all. Tips on tomorrow's race. Ninth race, the top pick is definitely going to be Bellwood. She's got some mood swing. Yeah, the only thing I've been doing for him all day is preparing his tea. He can't even use the photocopy machine by himself. I've got a phone call. Catch you later. <laughs> Hello, this is the Nine Bird Shop. One thing I haven't quite figured out, and I have no manual or anything, is how this um, alarm stop works. You know in the game when you fast forward, it stops when there's a blank portion on the tape. I couldn't get that to work, I don't know how, how that used to work. By the way, what's up with that bird making that whip crack sound? I never understood that. So I also have the sort of hidden conversation between Joy and Guizang on the tape. Well, let's fast forward beyond that and listen to some music so you can actually get a better impression of how the speaker on this thing sounds with some proper sounding material. So let's do that right now. So now I can bring this up all the way, start a little bit less volume, and roll the tape again, and have it run a bit open.
I think for a cabinet and speaker of this size it actually sounds quite full and rich. Of course it's only mono and it doesn't have any kind of Dolby so the tape hiss is very noticeable but for a 45 year old machine it's really not that bad. So one last feature I can show you is the recording quality which is also quite surprising. So this is a test recording on the Hitachi TRQ298. As you can see the view meter or rather the rack and battery meter is now showing some amplitude like it does in the game while playing the tape. So now let me try to find the spot where I started recording. I may, may have should have uh, reset the tape counter. So, this is a test recording on the Hitachi TRQ298. As you can see, the view meter or rather the rack and battery meter is now showing some amplitude like it does in the game while playing the tape. Yeah, quite surprising for such an old machine. And I guess that about wraps everything up that there is to show about this unit. Thanks for watching.